Welcome back to Ozarks Fox AM. People have always been curious about contacting their loved ones after they have passed. Intrigue Journal gives you a look at ways people have done that. Take a look. The Edison Ghost Phone, the Tesla Spirit Radio. In 1920, Tom Edison and Nikola Tesla independently experimented in inventing machines to communicate with spirits and ghosts. Even today on shows like Ghost Adventures and The Holzer's Files, they are making use of something called a spirit box, which is similar, but a much more evolved version of a concept that originated a hundred years ago during the Spanish flu pandemic, when more than 50 million people died from an incurable disease. The grieving survivors were desperate to connect with the poor souls that they had lost, and inventors Edison and Tesla believed that they could provide an electronic device to help people connect with their deceased relatives. Edison called his the ghost phone. Tesla called his a spirit radio. I spoke with our friend, New York Times bestselling author, Bill Burns, and he explained how these two brilliant men thought this could all be possible. Two brilliant and respected inventors experimented with developing machines that could contact the dead. We spoke to Bill Burns, who's the founder of Ancient Aliens, UFO Hunters, and a contributor to the Unsealed Files TV show. He's also the author of Edison versus Tesla, the battle over their last invention. He tells us about the rivalry between the two famous inventors and not just why they wanted to create a device to communicate with ghosts, but also how they believed it was possible. At the time of this recording, the cases of COVID-19 seem to be rising as our population is coming out of lockdown. But the good news is, is that people are recovering. Cases seem to be not as severe and the daily death rate seems to be steadily declining. Obviously, we don't want to lose one single life, but at least things seem to be moving in the right direction. While the COVID-19 pandemic is more than nearly anyone alive can imagine, this situation pales in comparison to what happened almost exactly 100 years ago. People were dying literally in the streets from the flu. There was no way to treat, there was no cure. There's no way to treat this. It just came in wave after wave after wave from 1918, again in 1919, again in 1920. In the wake of apocalyptic death tolls, could it actually be that Thomas Edison saw opportunity? So Edison, seeing the death around him in 1920, and it was all over. I mean, it was almost as, it was as bad as it was today actually worse because there were hospitals were overwhelmed sure he figured if there could be a way for the living to talk to the dead it would be the greatest consumer product in history and that's what he set out to build the ghost phone and it was a brilliant concept his idea was if he could have a beam of photons right, a, a narrow beam of light, a photon beam, aim it at a light meter, because he believed in quantum physics and believed that human beings were, com all life on planet Earth mm -hmm. was composed of these things called life units, basically quantum. And if he could convince a collection, a cohesive collection of quanta from a living person, the person's consciousness that was now disembodied because the body had died, to cross that beam of photons, it would register on a light meter and he would see the light meter and the voltmeter attached. He'd see that trigger and he'd know that he captured um, some quanta from a living person, the consciousness of a, of, of, of a departed person. So he would then get these um, mystics and clairvoyants to summon spirits of the dead to cross the power beam, to cross the light beam. That was Edison's ghost phone. That was his invention. Well, I mean, this just dovetails perfectly into the point you're making, 
is that they people were the, the Ouija boards and the spirit boards and the talking boards were incredibly popular because oh, everybody of they were yeah. for the exact same reason mm -hmm. because people believed so that's why Edison had people working a Ouija board to summon the spirits to cross the light beam but yeah he wanted to infuse the light bulb with the Ouija board and come up with a hybrid right Tesla had another view Tesla believed that um, energy, just like Einstein had I, was eternal. So he believed that the voices of the dead were still out there in a frequency that he could find. Tesla believed that he could capture sound from the departed because those frequencies never died. That's EVP. That's electronic voice processing. So that's what, so, Ed, so Tesla invented that. So that you have these two great electrical engineers, these the greatest inventors of the 20th century competing with each other over who could first talk to the dead. And that lasted until Edison died. But, and Ed, Edison was trying to uh, turn um, signals from the dead in the, in the, in, into light, a visual. Right. And, and, and Tesla. And Tesla yeah. was coming up with an auditory uh, right. response. Well, what do you think? Is there something to these theories? Who had a better chance of making contact? Edison or Tesla? And if you don't know, you can try it out for yourself. Just Google Tesla Spirit Radio and you can get yourself the plans to build a spirit radio. It'll just cost you about $30 in parts. And good luck with that. Of course, some people might think you're crazy. In fact, Thomas Edison's own family had a big problem about his ideas about a ghost phone. And I heard that he was a big, uh, he was very enthusiastic about it. And after his death, the family went ahead and had those pages of his autobiography removed. Exactly. Because they were embarrassed by it. Not I mean embarrassed. The church was furious. I mean, can you imagine the church looking at somebody saying, I can talk to spirits? Right. Holy mackerel. I mean, that flew right in the face of, Amer of American conservative religion in the early 20th century. Interesting. Very bright men that what? were yeah. very bright men that were coming up with this. Mm -hmm. People are still interested in this kind of thing. It's because we as humans we want don't, to know. We don't want, no, it's not that we want to know. We don't want to lose our loved ones. So by thinking that there's a way to talk to them in the afterlife, right. we have that hope of going, because we don't want to let go. It's just human nature. Well, we don't totally want to let go. There are loved ones, you know. It's totally true. And I think that we want to know that they're okay. We want to know that they are uh, okay. I think that's another thought. Uh, I see where you're, I, I know where my grandma is. Yeah. She's up there. I know she's okay. <laughs> so that, that's not what I would be looking for. I think it's that missing the person missing the conversations, missing talking to them. So they want to connect to them to be like, are you there? What is heaven like? You know, like I know a lot of people would like to be like, is it a white light? Is it? Yeah. Do you remember what Julianne told us when she, Julianne was doing her uh, near death experiences story? Mm -hmm. And the thing that gave me the most goosebumps, I think you'll agree with me, mm -hmm. is when the person who saw the white light came back and said the white light was God's breath. Oh, wow. And I was like, that gives me goosebumps. It gives me goosebumps. I remember when she said that, and I went, that just was like, oh, yeah. amazing. Definitely God is light. Yes. Yeah. Because all the stories have one thing in common, the white light. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it, it really oh, is. Oh, it just makes me yeah. ponder I, I have read everything. some books of uh, people who have had near-death experiences and come back. It is, it is intriguing. It is interesting. But I don't believe that we're supposed to try to contact the other side. I'm with you on That's that. That's my personal you on well, that. I agree with you. Yeah, I, I would never do a seance. We're not supposed to know until until it's time to know them. I, cause I, I don't want to go to a seance. We were always oh, taught growing I, up, no Ouija boards. Me in there. No, uh -uh. no Ouija boards, no. no seance, no. I had friends that did. I was not interested. Still not interested. No thanks. That I just don't want to mess with the other side. And also, mm -hmm. my grandpa, being a preacher, said he believes there are evil spirits and demons. Right. And he said, as long as you're um, opening the door. Don't open the door to right, it. Right. Yeah. Like if you open your heart or your mind yeah. to that thing, yeah. they're more likely to come in. Yeah. I, that's just what I believe growing up. So I've I mean. I've heard that. Yeah. 
Okay, very interesting have... stuff, though, yes? Yes, and they'll be live with us in Branson next Thursday. Yes, next week is going to be so yes. fun. Don't go anywhere. More fun on Ozarks Fox AM right after this. Yes. Yes. Think of that, the, the breath of God. I that know. White light. Isn't that Like amazing? drawing.